channel. My name is Sarah and I'm coming to you from the south part of Sweden uh, and this is my making podcast. I share some of my biggest interests in life which is making uh, a handmade wardrobe and with that knitting and sewing. I just want to start out with Big thank you to all of you who wrote me and commented on my last episode when I did my first episode in English. I was so nervous and so scared about putting that episode up because I was so nervous that no one <laughs> would understand me, no one would think that it made <laughs> any sense when I talked English to you but I'm actually really happy I did and I'm gonna keep on giving this a try. I really really love to be able to connect with more people uh, that share my interest with this crafty life. So I know I mentioned in the last episode that I want to keep the episodes quite short and um, that would make it easier for me to edit and upload and uh, maybe this one would get a little bit longer because I have so much that I actually want to share and talk about and it's been so long since I did an episode. I think it was like in the beginning of November I did my last episode in Swedish so I have a lot I want to share. So maybe today we have a little bit of a longer episode. So grab yourself a cup of coffee or tea or in my case just a cup of water because the time is about 9 in the morning but I've been up since 7 since I have two little children <laughs> that likes to go up in the morning. So for me the morning coffee is already out <laughs> and um, yeah. Let's get started. I want to get started on what I'm wearing, uh, like I normally do, and this is actually two of my latest makes. This is the Avenir jumpsuit by the Friday Pattern Company, but I've made it into a blouse. This is just, oh, I'm gonna step back, I think. This is only the top part of the jumpsuit. This it has these huge puffy sleeves and this draw, um, elastic uh, band in the neck and yeah and for that I'm actually wearing my gypsum skirt by So Liberated uh, this one is my fourth one <laughs> I love this pattern it's the perfect skirt for me I love the high waist I love the shape of it and when I do my gypsum skirts, I always add about 20 centimeters in length because I love a quite midi or maxi length skirt. I don't want it to go down to the floor, but quite long, so that's what I'm doing. And this linen fabric is so beautiful. I would highly recommend everyone to go and check out uh, Linehem. Dot se they have the most amazing linen fabric and this is a super lightweight um, natural linen and it's like um, it's this washed linen so it's already when you get it in the package it's so soft and so movable and oh, I love it so this is my Avenir jumpsuit but turned into a blouse and the fabric for the skirt is actually also this uh, thin linen fabric, but I bought that at corpse.se uh, and that's also this uh, washed linen, so it's super super soft. And on my feet I have like as always my, what's the name of these? It's a pattern by Fiber Tails. It's these socks with the little braid in the back and oh my god why don't I 
remember what they are called now. Oh, it's a pattern by Fiber Tales, and I really love these. These are knitted in Alaposlopi, and this one and my tulip socks is like the only thing I wear around the house right now. I love these warm, cozy socks. So, <clears throat> another thing I mentioned in my last episode is that I will try to be better at putting all my information in the down bar below um, links to my Ravelry, Ravelry account, my Instagram, the people I mention here, uh, the patterns I'm using and um, if you get a link to my Ravelry account you can go in there and check out because I, I try to be really good about putting in what you, yarn I'm using and the colorways there. So just to make this a little bit easier, I'm gonna try to talk a little bit about colors on some projects, but if I don't have like the, the, the yarn left, I won't do that. So please check out my Ravelry account. And I don't think I mentioned it, but you can find me on Ravelry as Mrs. Valgren, and you can find me on Instagram as Mrs. Valgren Knits. And something else I wanted to mention, because a person that knows me really well <laughs> uh, told me uh, after my last episode when I said that I was 32 years old that no you're not, you're 31, and that's true. I'm 31, I'm turning 32 in May. So that's clear. <laughs> uh, if it's important, I'm 31. So I thought I would start about talking about my latest makes. I have just put together the latest like sweater sweater makes um, and the sewing stuff that's most that I'm <laughs> that I want to talk about the most actually. Uh, I have made some other small bits and pieces. I have made some baby knits for my cousin's baby. I have sewn some baby clothes and um, knitted a few hats and stuff uh, this winter. But if you go to my Instagram account, I usually is um, pretty good at putting up everything I knit there. Sewing wise, I'm a little bit... <sighs> it's harder to photograph sewing stuff, I think. So that's not always there, but the knitting stuff probably is. So. Some of the latest makes I've made knitting wise is um, this uh, Christmas I actually or maybe the whole of December I had this uh, huge uh, dip in my knitting mojo if you can call it like that. I just I, w I didn't get happy about anything. I, I didn't get satisfied about the result. I nothing was great <laughs> then. I ripped out almost everything I worked on. I started so many things and just ripped it out and yeah I I think it was a huge, a huge part was that I was so stressed out about work and my last weeks there and um, yeah I just couldn't focus on that then. But then when the Christmas break came and um, some free time and some time with the family, I <laughs> got my mojo back. And that's hugely uh, a big part is this sweater. <laughs> so this is my Esther sweater by uh, Camilla Vaad. And I love her patterns. I think they are so well written. And they always fit me really well, even though it's like a circular joke. Uh, they really fit good on the body. I love the way she makes her short rows. And yeah, this was a super easy pattern to follow because the short uh, of the color work is really simple to learn. It's You can almost see. Uh, you don't need to watch the pattern all the time. You can almost just see what's going to happen next. Happened. What's going to happen next? <laughs> okay. Uh, and this is knitted in 
one of my absolute favorite yarns at the moment. I think it's my favorite yarn of all time actually. And I know that's something big to say, but the base color and the yellow and mustard color in this one is knitted in. Uh, it's the, the little sister to Gilead. It's the Ulysses. Ulysses? I don't know how, how you pronounce that. But it's from Derire Natura, and this is an amazing yarn. Both this and Ulysse is, oh my god, I love it so much. And um, the dark grey one is actually Rauma Fenul, which also is a yarn I really love. But this yarn and this one is, this is like the perfect yarn. <laughs> actually it's so buttery soft it's so squishy and oh i love everything i love every colorway and i love that it's not super wash uh, because it's soft but it's not like this sticky soft if you know what i mean it's um yeah it's really really beautiful and there is actually two stores in sweden that i know of right now that sells um Derere Naturas. Uh, yarns and that is organicknitters.se and makeri uh, 14 se I will try to link them or at least write them down in the down bar so you can go and watch these yarns because it's an amazing color color palette and an amazing yarn actually so this is Esther by Camilla Vaad I usually, since I have made a couple of t-shirts before, I'm a little bit um, torn about this because I don't use them as much when it's a short sleeved top, uh, knitted top, but um, this one is actually really good. I love it with like a white shirt underneath and my uh, mustard gypsum skirt and um, yeah. I've got a lot of use of it and I didn't think so, but I wanted to make it just to get my mojo back and do something that was really fun. And I'm actually thinking about making another one of these with long sleeves and maybe in some blue tones for my husband. So yeah, maybe that's something coming up. Something else that I've been making... Uh, that's actually my latest finished object is this sweater. This is the, oh my god, what's the name? Offering of three of Three's Jumper by Melody Hoffman. This is not a pattern that's out on Ravelry yet, but I follow her on Patreon and I would highly recommend doing that if you like her videos that she puts up on YouTube and if you would love like to get some to see some stuff behind the scenes when she designs and talk about yarns and colors I would highly recommend following her there because then you get these pre-launch of her patterns and this was one of them but I think it's coming out really soon and this is the offering of trees. I love this sweater so much. It's the first time I try out this yarn, but this is uh, Ritis Garn by Sandness, and this is the color 1012. And this is like this neutral white, it's not bleach, it's just the neutral white tone. And I really, really like this this uh, yarn. It's really similar to Rauma Vans that I've also knitted in before and this is a really low price <laughs> yarn actually. It's, um, it's not expensive at all and I really really like it. It's rustic but airy so it doesn't get... I don't think when rustic yarn is that tightly spun I don't think it's it's itchy at all actually it's just airy and warm and beautiful so this is Fetus Garn by Samnes 
and this is of Brain of Trees. And what I love about this sweater is actually the small details like in the raglan and it has a split hem and down on the hem there is these beautiful little trees and I love this longer hem in the back so I can tuck this in to my high uh, skirts and yeah and these tubular bind off in all the ribbing parts something I changed in the patterns when I often do is that I made this folded neckline that I just flip over and stitch down because I really like the feeling of that I really like that it gives the neck a little bit more stability and I think it's a nice finish and this is going to be my spring outside <laughs> in the gar garden sweater I really really like it a lot. I made it in a size larger than I normally would but I wanted to have this big cozy sweater to wear in the garden so it's a perfect match for that and I can highly recommend both the yarn and the pattern when it comes out uh, so yeah <clears throat> another thing is actually also from Melody Hoffman or Bee Mandarins and I think in my last episode in November I talked about this and that I have started it that this is my tulip jumper I love this sweater so much uh, the few things that I've actually knitted and made made the last few months that I don't rip out is actually stuff that I become really happy and really satisfied about so that's a good thing I think about maybe take a step back and and see if this is something that you actually gonna love is this something that you will use and that is definitely the case with this one and the other two sweaters that I've made this is the tulip jumper I knitted this in Plotelupi in this color I think it's beige heather but I don't really know I think I've linked it in my Ravelry so check that out there but Plotelupi is an amazing yarn I think it's super soft is maybe not the right word but uh, it's so much softer than Letlopi I think uh, and I have had some trouble with mohair for the last few months I think I find it a little bit itchy and I get warm in a way that I don't like but this is super airy and still fluffy and gets this beautiful halo so I haven't used any mohair in my uh, tulip I have only used two strands of platelopi and this hemline is just the cutest little thing and if I had smaller children I would definitely make the tulip baby jumper I we have our best friends have a little girl that's only seven or eight months now so I'm so eager to maybe make one for her but as it's quite a thick yarn and you don't know what parents think about this rustic thick yarn for babies but I really love it and if I had smaller children I would definitely definitely make one for them but this is so beautiful and I plan to wear this also as an out outwear garment or how do you how you can call it I plan to wear this with my skirts or with high waist uh, some tights or stockings what you ever you call it and yeah I like it I love um, these thick knitted garments but I'm actually kind of a warm person so I can't wear wear this inside uh, for a whole day without getting really really warm so for out 
outerwear and just cuddling up in the sofa in the evening if you're a little bit cold and have been outside all day that's perfect but for a whole day inside this is too warm but oh, yeah this is my favorite color at the moment these like heathered beige tones as you can see I really like these tones at the moment and so that's what I'm gonna keep on knitting in actually so that was a few of my finished objects in knitting and now I thought I could go over to some sewing so for Christmas I wanted to make a dress for myself I bought this beautiful tartan fabric I've, after I've seen a picture of Sonderflor they had this beautiful checked uh, dress uh, with button in the front and a long skirt and long sleeves and a collar and uh, it was so, just so beautiful but since I made a decision last year not to buy any clothes for myself I decided to try to make it instead. So I have based my dress pattern from a dress in this book but I've actually changed it quite a bit. I will try to see if I could find it. This is the dress, dress I based it on. And this is the Saraste. Saraste? I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's the it's from a named clothing company, and it's from the Breaking the Pattern book. Uh, so since I've changed the pattern quite a lot, I decided to make a mock-up, and I don't usually make mock-ups. Uh, one, because I don't usually make clothes that's really tight and fitting because that's not something that I'm drawn to like for everyday life I like something loose and flowy and uh, breathable but since I was going for a quite more fitted look I actually made a mock-up and that mock-up was actually the dress I was wearing in my introduction video uh, last week. Oh, I haven't buttoned this up. But this is made from a super cheap unbleached cotton fabric. I don't know if you can see this. So it's a little bit dotted and it's just unbleached and I put on some wooden buttons and yeah. So this was actually just going to be a mock-up of the dress that I was planning to make. But since I'm all into beige and neutrals right now, I really kind of like this. <laughs> it's so super cheap. This fabric is just, like I said, unbleached cotton. And yeah, I, probably this dress will cost like 100 Swedish crowns or something in material. But I really, really like it. So I decided to put buttons on it and save it. And I've actually tried to do some embroidery on the hem and I was thinking about doing maybe some embroidery on the collar but I ripped that act out actually because I wasn't so happy about it. I think maybe I still will do some embroidery here uh, just to make it a little bit more dressed up or uh, something but I don't know right now I just kind of really like it as it is so I decided to keep it and yeah I think for summer this will be an amazing dress to wear so the mock-up I did was actually to make this dress this is a tartan fabric from rosahuset.se uh, this is like this flannel we call it in Sweden I don't know what you say in other places but I like this dress so much I think it's a great uh, substitution for the Sonderflor dress I would still 
really love to buy one of their dresses and maybe for spring I will do that because now I have decided to maybe <laughs> once in a while buy some clothes but then I want it to be from brands that I feel comfortable buying from uh, but yeah I really really like this and if you go into Sonderflor there is a dress very similar to this one and I would highly recommend you to check that out and yeah the this is amazing I love it so much and maybe it's a little bit dark now for spring but yeah I'm so happy with this dress and I actually can highly recommend <laughs> doing that if you find something that you really like but you feel like it's too expensive, you feel like I just don't want exactly that, I want to get some inspiration from that, but doing my own thing, this is an amazing way of doing it. I'm, I'm really happy about it. So another thing I've made recently is actually this blouse. This is a pattern by Peppermint magazine and I think it's in the folds that makes this pattern for them. This is actually supposed to be um, a little bit more fitted sleeve and then with these uh, pleated uh, sleeves caps on. But I've changed it to a little bit more of a puffy sleeve with a cup in the uh, bottom and I decided to make some embroidery on this one. This was super super fun. I really love this style of clothing right now. This kind of cottagecore, um, old fashioned, a little bit <laughs> granny like um, clothing. So this will be perfect for spring. And embroidery is super super fun actually. I just took one of my, uh, I have these pens. I don't have one here, but I have these pens that you can draw on fabric and when you ironed it, it just disappears. So I did that just to get an idea of where I wanted the embroidery to be and then I just watched some YouTube videos and I'm actually really really happy about this. It's far from perfect, this embroidery, but I think maybe that's a little bit of the charm of it, <laughs> that it's not that perfect actually. And this is just some plain white Eotex cotton fabric from, I thought, I think I bought this at tygdrömmar.se but I don't know if it's there or vasahuset.se, I don't know really but it's this Eotex white cotton fabric. And with the same fabric like as that one, I've actually made this shirt. It's a little bit wrinkly now because it's it came right out from the wash. But this is actually the same pattern as the dress that I made. But it, this is the blouse version. So it's this flared out bottom edge. And I've made this uh, a little bit lacy feeling in the color. I just sewn some lace in there instead of the collar piece that's gonna fit um, that usually flips over I just sewn some lace in there and a plain white shirt is really usable so this is actually something that I like really much and I've made one in black too but I thought black is hard to show so this one is actually really good a staple in my wardrobe and the last thing that I made also inspired by a clothing brand is this skirt or petticoat you can say I've been highly inspiration inspired by people that's sewing clothes clothes from the past um, like old-fashioned sewing hand stitching beautiful dresses <laughs> and um, uh, yeah this is super inspired by Little Woman's Atelier they have almost <laughs> the exact petticoat like this one this is in 
super thin washed linen from linehem.se and I've based my petticoat as all my skirts from my gypsum skirt but then I made this uh, edging on the on the bottom um, yeah I'm gonna use this as a skirt for summer maybe when it's warm and airy and maybe for midsummer with uh, with just a blouse or a knitted top or something but for winter now I've actually wore it underneath my dresses like for an extra layer maybe for a fuller skirt and it's actually a really good thing to have an extra skirt under your dresses if you're like me that refuses to wear pants I just find pants to be really uncomfortable and I don't like it at all I have it in the garden sometimes and I have a pair of dungarees that I really like but they are so big and loose and airy so that doesn't bother me that much but this one is a really good thing to have underneath your dresses if you want to stay a little bit more warm and I think it's super cute when this little edge sticks out under the dress so yeah that's also something that I've been sewing I've been sewing quite a lot for December this year and I think that had a lot of, to do with my lacking of knitting mojo that I just needed to do something where I could just do something new where I had to focus on new things because still sewing is something that I really have to focus on uh, I can't like knitting just sit and relax I have to actually focus on what I'm doing so yeah I don't know December was a time of sewing and now I'm back at my knitting mojo again and that feels really really good because I love being there actually so ongoing projects I have two three actually but two knitted projects that I will show you today and one that is sleeping but that one I can show you in the next episode because I haven't it here right now and the first item I have to show you is a quite new cast on actually let's see uh, I knitted a Zweig, 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 <laughs> I don't know how you pronounce it, from Oiland Knitworks last year with short sleeves and quite a fitted body, body and I thought maybe I could get a lot of use of that in the summer but I really didn't, I almost never wore it actually. So that one has been gifted to my little brother's wife and she likes it really much so that's amazing but i really missed having that sweater because i loved the lace lace joke i love the thin fabric and the flowiness that it gets so i decided to make a new one for myself and make the changes that i didn't like with the last one for this one so this yarn has been in my stash for one and a half two years and it's this beautiful um, um, superwash merino hand dyed by Emily Knits and I really love this yarn I've knitted in her yarns before and I have always loved knitting with it but I will say and this is not at all her the dyer's <laughs> fault <laughs> it's no one's fault actually but when I knit this garment, I can't hold it in my hands for too long because I get really, really itchy in my hands. And I don't know if it's because I haven't knitted with Superwash Merino for a big garment, only for socks, for so long now, actually. It's, it's a really long time since I used Superwash Merino. It's not my favorite for garments, but... I really like the coolness and the, um, the thin drapey fabric it gets like with thinner clothes but so I don't know if it's the superwash or if it's something in that in the 
color or in the soap that it's washed washed in but I get really really itchy in my hands when I hold this sweater too long but I decided to make it to finish it anyway because I it gets away as soon as I wash my hands really carefully uh, with some organic soap it actually gets away immediately so I have huge hopes for this sweater not to itch uh, on my body when I wear it because I'm gonna wash it when I knitted it but that's just something that I've been thinking about is it the super wash if is it the dye I don't know but it's something um, that I react to on this yarn uh, but Emily makes the most amazing colors I love the color I love the yarn so it's nothing against the yarn <laughs> and the dyer it's just something that I'm reacting to and I thought I'll share that because maybe someone has um, like experienced that themselves but <laughs> this is my ongoing spike sweater the changes I've made for this sweater is actually that I've gone up a needle size and this is actually sport weight instead of fingering weight that I've used in the other one so I get a more loose fitted garment I've done some extra short rows in the back compared to what it says in the pattern and I've made it a little bit cropped I've made it without the little star pattern these small braided things in the body and I'm gonna make it with long sleeves so I finished one sleeve this morning actually with when we ate breakfast so with the cuff and everything and I didn't want to start the next sleeve because I want to make I want to how do you call it I want to tip you about something or give you a tips uh, I don't know tips isn't that like oh anyway I want to <laughs> mention something that I really liked doing the last sweaters I've knitted I uh, I got this um, uh, tricks from uh, Erika Åberg's book uh, Stickat till vardags when I knitted my Austersjön uh, you do this provisional cast on for the stitches under the arm so you do a provisional cast on on a separate um, knitting needle and then when you're gonna make the um, stitches for the underarm you just knit those stitches from the other one and then you have these live stitches under the arm so you just rip this out and pick up the stitches and you don't have any seaming you don't have any bulk anything under the arm it gets really really smooth and nice and let me show you it just continues into nothing here so right now i'm actually really really excited to get this done I think it's gonna be a lovely sweater to wear for spring and yeah I love it and the color in the yoke is actually this one that I had at home a few skeins of and it's actually Rauma Fenel so I'm mixing this super super soft superwash merino with this natural Rauma Fenel in the color O400 uh, in this sweater and I think that works out really good. I don't mind that it's different textures in the yoke. I think it gets really beautiful So this is a sweater that I'm actually really excited to finish and to wash and to be able to wear for spring and my last um, knitted ongoing project is actually a test knit that I'm doing for oh my cam camera stopped there but this is actually a test knit I'm doing for Aftonstrik and I've knitted this cardigan that I'm knitting before that I'm knitting now but I've knitted the sweater version before 
This is the Overwintering <laughs> sweater by Aftenstrik and this is one this is together with my Austerskön by Erika Åberg my favorite knitted garment ever actually I knitted this one in um, Hull Centrum two ply yarn and Rama Finul and it's this light thin <laughs> knitted sweater and the fit is great I made this one a little bit cropped I love that it's a big flared out body and oh, I love the fit of this so when she asked on Instagram about test knitters for the cardigan version I couldn't refuse so I signed up for that and so I'm knitting this one in uh, Rauma Finul and this is the color 0406 uh, and it's this beige heathered colorway and these are Rauma's, oh, Rauma's new labels and I think they are beautiful and I love these yarns, I love Rauma's um, yarns when they're this heathered so they are colored on gray and I'm knitting it together with this white that's the same one for the Zweig it's 0400 0400 and I've got this far because I started it this week so oh my god you can't see so much here but this is the First did the bird section and here is the leaves and I'm gonna make it in only these two colors. I was decided, when I signed up for the test knits actually, I was planning to make this in yarn I had at home, which was this heathered grey blue colorway and with the white one. But then I saw, I think it was Matilda from Organic Knitter Don't SE that has made a mitten called Liv Moder Vanten. That's actually a knit along that's ongoing right now for the cause of endometriosis. That's a woman's, uh, I don't know if you can call it a disease or it's something that women experience. Uh, Experience. That sounds really really weird and wrong, but you can go and search the hashtag, hashtag Sticka Tillsammans for Endometrios and they are doing this uh, knit along where they collect money for this women disease or women's Yeah, something that you can experience and a lot of people do and it's super important to highlight these things so please go and check that out i'm gonna try to write down the people i think it's pamela sticker and one more account that's um holding this this knit along so please go and check that out but <laughs> matilda from organic knitters put out a picture where she was knitting with it or if it was a picture she liked because of the colorway i don't know but she used beige and white so when I saw that picture I just ordered <laughs> eight skeins of this beige one because I loved that color combination and I think that would be a beautiful cardigan. Uh, this is knitted in quite a loose gauge actually for Rama. Usually when I knit like uh, color work uh, and color work cardigans or sweaters in Rauma or two ply uh, wool yarn it's like 3.5 3.75 but this one is a four millimeter needles so it's quite loose gauge and I think that will be perfect for summer with this thin cardigan to just wrap around and use in the summer evenings so yeah really happy about that one I have something else that I'm really eager to start on, or actually two things. I showed you this yarn from Gilead. This yarn I actually have six balls of, 
because I started uh, Melody Hoffman B Mandarins uh, Into the Woods, woods jumper uh, but <laughs> I had to rip that out because it was huge and that has nothing to do with the pattern it just it was all me <laughs> because I failed my gauge quite a lot actually it was fine when I just knitted in the round but when I did the, the little trees I think I was too scared to like pull on it too hard so it wouldn't scrunch up the fabric so my gauge in the joke was just so huge and yeah but I really love that sweater so I'm hoping uh, when I get my swag finished that I maybe can start that over in and make it a little bit smaller hopefully and I know I talk a lot about <laughs> bee mandarins in this episode because I just love her designs and she has put out on her patreon I think it's an unnamed sweater right now I don't think it has a name but it's this really simple boxy pullover and I love the little details around the neck and the fitted sleeves with the quite airy body and oh, I just love it. And she has knitted her version in Woolly Mammoth Fiber, Emma's yarn that's a BFL Gotland. But I have six skeins of this that's Jarbo's new or quite new <laughs> uh, yarn Svensk Ull. It's this beautiful colorway and I think this is called like rhubarb lemonade, <laughs> this color. It's this peachy, yellowy, um, pink color and ah, oh, I love this yarn. And I think the gauge actually fits quite good for that sweater. I think it's 21 stitches uh, on 4 millimeter needles so that's perfect for that sweater. and. I was gifted one of these skeins from Yarbos to try it out and as soon as I got, got it home I got so obsessed with this colorway so I made a call to my local yarn store and asked if they had anything left in this color and told her to just take every skein you have and put it in a basket, I'm coming. So I bought, bought five more so I have six skeins of this and that will be more than enough that sweater so this is actually also an upcoming project that I'm longing to cast on actually this will be so beautiful in this color and that's a beautiful sweater I'm really into simple designs right now I know I love knitting cables and lace and color work and except for like the lace in the swag and the little bit of color work that's in my overwintering cardigan uh, a lot of the things i'm knitting on is actually really much like stockinette stitch and that fits quite good in my life right now that's what i want to do that's what i want to wear and so that's what i'm planning to do so I have two sweaters planned in these ones and I also have a sweater's quantity of this white platyloupi that I actually want to make like a forager sweater or just a basic um, maybe just a no frill sweater by Petite Knit, something really simple in this white uh, Plotolopi also. I talked to Silla, Tantzilla here on YouTube this week actually about me always been a person that don't like to stash yarn. I don't like to have a lot of stuff in my in my cabinet. I just buy things when I have a project for them but I think it's like this coronavirus thing that makes me believe that there is not gonna be enough yarn for me because I've ordered quite a lot of yarn and as I mentioned in my last episode I kind of don't like have a lot of stuff around me but that don't seem to be the case when it comes to yarn actually 
so yeah that's it for knitted garments knitted inspiration some things that i actually really longing for to cast on and sewing wise i don't have anything going right now but i have some beautiful linen fabric both on corpse.se and from linehem left in my stash so there is going to be a lot more linen garments for this summer and woolly sweaters and not that much in superwash but I'm gonna try to stick to these a little bit more clean wool yarns without superwash in because I just like the feeling of it better and the itchiness in my hands can I only the only thing I can like imagine is that I maybe is reacting to the superwash in it so yeah that's it for me today actually I want to thank you all for watching and for hanging with me here for a while I hope that you have understood what I had to say that you are all well and safe and that the spring can bring some more opportunities for us to meet